Hello, everyone. Welcome to the real estate market analysis for January 2023 for Morgan Hill, California. My name is Robert Whitelaw. I'm a licensed real estate broker right here in California, living in the southern Silicon Valley, also called the South County, where Morgan Hill is located. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me, you can find me at soldbyrobert.com. But let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the numbers for January and see if we can figure out where we are. Um, first, we're going to start with active listings. This is the total number of homes that were available on the market in January of 2023. And what we're going to do with this particular chart is kill two birds with one stone. We're going to take a look at how things were one year ago, comparing January of 2022 to January of 2023, so we can get that year over year data. But then at the same time, we're able to sort of look over our shoulder, see what the trends have been month to month. And by looking at last year's data, hopefully be able to come up with some estimations of where we're going to go in the coming months in 2023. So to start off, we can see that in January of 2022, we had 32 homes on the market uh, in January of 2022. We have a 78% increase in the total number of active listings. We have 57 homes currently on the market in January of 2023 for Morgan Hill. And that represents to buyers the number of homes you have to choose from. And for sellers, that's sort of your competition number. How many other homes are you competing with for the attention of sellers, for, of buyers out there? Uh, so a dramatic increase from the same time last year. In terms of new listings, and these are homes that were actually put on the market onto the MLS in the month of January. We also saw an increase this year compared to the same time last year. Last year, we saw 33 homes added to the market in January of 2022. In January of 2023, that number jumped up to 36. So not a huge jump. And given the small sample size of, home, of things that happen in Morgan Hill as it relates to the market, it really is relatively a wash, but it did represent a 9% increase from the same time last year. Now next, and this is obviously a very important number, we're going to talk about total number of homes sold. In Morgan Hill in January of 2023, we saw an overall drop of almost 70% in the total number of sold homes. We had 39 homes sold in January of 2022. And then in January of 2023, that number dropped to a very low 12. So and a lot of different things are playing into that. Interest rates are playing into that. Uh, concerns about where the market is, whether or not people are buying at a point where the market is still too high in anticipation of some market corrections pushing home values down. But let's go ahead and pause for a moment and take a look at what these numbers actually represent. Because what I like to do is to compare the number of homes sold to the number of homes listed, right? Because if we're selling more homes than we're listing, then we're generally reducing the total inventory over time. And that's obviously not happening. Right now, we had a total number of homes sold drop by 20%, excuse me, by 69%. So as we take a look at these numbers and compare last year to this year, we can see overall we've got a 69% drop. But another thing I like to take a look at is how many homes are we adding to or subtracting from the market when we compare the total number of listed homes to the total number of sold homes? And right now we are listing in January more homes than we are selling to the tune of 24. So we've added 24 more homes onto the market in January because we did not sell the number equal to or above the total number of homes listing. So again, another month where we've added inventory in January. And that's the case for all of the communities that we check. It's it's true of Santa Clara County overall. It's true of San Jose, Gilroy, and also Morgan Hill. Now, as we look at Morgan Hill pending sales, now pending sales represents the number of offers that were actually accepted in the month of January in 2023. And it, this is an important one because it, it helps us anticipate what we're going to see in the following month in terms of closed transactions. So one interesting thing to note here is in January of 2023, we have 17 properties that went either pending or contingent. Normally, we would see those numbers reflected in homes sold in the following month, assuming a typical length of escrow. Some escrows will extend a little further than that, so may, in, may not end up showing up till the second month after the month that goes into, into uh, pending or contingent. But it's a great way to anticipate what we're going to see in terms of closings. 
Now, if we compare this to the same time last year, we're down from the same time last year by about 11%. Last year, we had 19 homes that went contingent or pending in January of 2022. This year, we have 17. And we can see we've had a pretty steady decline here. And if we look at last year, we can see the number took a pretty dramatic jump in February and March where it reached its peak. And that's been pretty typical of past years under the new reality. It used to be that we started to see these offers being made a little bit later, uh, but we have seen a big jump in recent years to happen in the first quarter. But we also need to keep in mind that March was a pivotal month in terms of interest rates where sales started to slow down because of increasing interest rates. So we see a dramatic drop off that pretty much continues all through the rest of the year from March of 2022 until January of 2023. So it'll be interesting to see what numbers we get in February and in March for Morgan Hill in terms of total number of homes that go into escrow. A lot of that's going to depend on what interest rates do, but we'll keep an eye on that and see where it leads us because I think this is an interesting number to keep track of. Next, let's go ahead and talk about average original list price. Now, original list price is a number that doesn't frequently get reported by real estate folks. And I, I think it's a great way to get a insight into what sellers are thinking. What are the expectations of sellers when they list their home? Because this is what was, was on the listing agreement the day they signed it. This is what the home went on the market for that very first day. So this really does represent expectations on the part of sellers. And we can see that compared to the same time last year, uh, we actually have a decrease in Morgan Hill, which is unusual overall. In the other communities we check, in the county overall, for instance, the average original list price was 12.4% higher than the same time last year. So people were expecting, on average, to get over 10% more than they did a year ago, which hasn't been borne out by sales prices. But Morgan Hill this month, unlike past months, have definitely, on average, seen a reduction in what their expectations are. Now, the average list price right out of the chute in Morgan Hill was $1,389,470, which is down from last year's $1,453,845. And remember, because we have a relatively low sample size in Morgan Hill, just one or two more high-priced or more low-priced homes can definitely push this average number up or down artificially. So given that, I wouldn't put this as a huge, make a decision on this kind of number. In other words, don't see this as a huge readjustment or realignment on the part of sellers in terms of really understanding what their sales price is uh, or what they would like their sales price to be. In my mind, this is more a reflection on some lower end properties coming onto the market and just a fewer number of higher end homes coming on the market. But Again, I think it, it shows an interesting leveling, at least, because the last uh, couple of months we can see we had some very elevated in November and December, and we've sort of gotten back to levels that we saw in October. Uh, but I would like to see expectations adjusted on the part of sellers in Morgan Hill because the, the current market in most areas just doesn't support expecting a big jump in what you're going to get for your home compared to the same time last year. Now, let's go ahead and compare that with what the average sales price is. And this is what I mean in terms of understanding what the realities of the market are. While in most other areas, expectations are higher than the same time last year compared to last year, on average, folks are getting less than they did last year. In Morgan Hill, this is absolutely true. The average sales price in January of 2022 in Morgan Hill was $1,391,000. That's uh, compared to January of 2023, that's we're at $1,266,966. That's a 9% drop from the same time last year. So that disconnect between what folks are listing at and what folks are able to sell at really needs to be understood by sellers. Because the more you wait, the less you're going to get for that home. So the, the longer you delay, the less you're going to make. Because we're in a situation where prices are tending to go down over time, not increase. So every day you wait, you're losing some amount of money in terms of what you could have gotten. The short version of that is, apologies for not starting with the short version, but you will make more selling today than you will a month from today. So you need to really be pricing your home effectively right at the, at the beginning. Don't buy into this whole, we can always lower our price argument simply because you'll be reducing that price far more in a month than you would be reducing it today. Okay, next percent of list price. This is on average when compared to the list price at the time the home sold. And now it's important to understand that distinction. With the previous number I, relating to list price, I was 
showing you what sellers expected. This is a great one to look into the buyer's mindset. What offers were they making when faced with a, with a certain list price? So this is compared to the list price that the home was at when the offer was made. So last year, we can see homes were selling for about 107% of asking price at the time the offer was made. So a 7% increase over asking price, which indicates all kinds of things, right? Obviously, a lot of a very competitive market, very much a seller's market, multiple offers. That's typically the kinds of things you'll see go along with a number like that. Today, we're at 96.9 in January of, two, of 2023. That's a 10.1% overall delta between those two numbers. So folks, on average, are getting about 3.1% below what they're asking for. So when a buyer is faced with a list price, they are perfectly comfortable with coming in at a offer price that is 3.1% below what is being asked. And sellers are comfortable with accepting it because this represents transactions that have actually happened. So this is the reality number. We can see we've had a steady decline. I would expect this number to perhaps rise a little bit as we head into a more competitive market. I am not seeing at this point a huge jump in the number of buyers, but we are seeing a bit of an escalation in folks searching. So we'll see how that plays out in the first quarter of 2023. But I would guess that this number might go up a little bit simply because it tends to historically, if we look at last year, we can see that January and February, this number was relatively flat, but March and April it peaked. So I don't think it'll peak as much. I don't think there'll be as much climb between February and March of 2023 as we saw between February and March of 2022. Again, because we didn't have all those crazy interest rates going up. Uh, but as we get into March and we compare backwards, we'll start to see a comparison between similar marketplaces with very where both ends of the year had very challenging interest rates. Next, days on market. This is one where the trend's not gonna be too hard to spot. Last year at this time, we had 14, excuse me, uh, yes, 14 days on the market, so basically two weeks, and that was an artificial number defined by real estate agents who in the listing would simply say, we're not gonna look at any offers until such and such a date, which was typically two days after the, two weeks after the day that it was listed to allow for as many buyers as possible to view the home. Today, we're at 48 days. That's the same day number of days, two months in a row between December and January. So over a month, it's been taking over a month since November. We've had a couple of months in the past year where we also hit that 30 plus. And the reason why I focus on that is I think psychologically 30 days has a profound effect on a seller's mindset. Once you hit a month with no offers, um, I, I think that that sets off a warning light. And I would hope that long before 30 days that a seller and an agent have had a really honest conversation about where they need to be in terms of pricing because as i said before the longer they wait the more it's going to cost them overall a 243 percent increase in the same time last year in the total days on market so that is just nuts now to wrap things up for morgan hill we're going to take a look at the number of homes that have had a price reduction in january this month in january it was 30.4 percent of homes on the market had a price reduction last month it was 38.5 so What's going to make this number either stay the same or go down is because obviously this represents folks who listed and they listed too high and they've had to reduce their price. I think we will see this gradually go down as folks list their home at a reasonable price for the market. But if we continue to see homes being listed on the marketplace that are at these levels that are really outside the realm of reality for our current market, we'll see going forward this number staying about the same as as these homes need to reduce their price in order to get sold. And of course, the corollary to that is we'll continue to see days on market rise as folks don't reduce these prices uh, for whatever reason. So, all right, I hope that's been valuable information for you folks. It gives us a little bit of an insight into what's going on in Morgan Hill. And hopefully we've been able to extract a little bit here to figure out where things might be going. If you have any questions, concerns, observations you'd like to make about the market or ask about your home in Morgan Hill, Please feel free to reach out to me. As I mentioned before, you can find me at soldbyrobert.com. From there, you can actually get an instant valuation of what your home's value might be. But you can also get an in-depth market analysis that is going to be far more reliable than the online estimates that tend to work on algorithms. That And with the market changing so quickly, none of those are going to be really on the mark, whether we're talking about Zillow or anybody else. And if, of course, you'd like to start your home search, I'm happy to help. Again, something you can start going uh, right there at soldbyrobert.com. Thanks again for listening, everybody. I look forward to talking to you all next time.